actually like to teach what normal is first before we get into the disease state. You know, what is the retina? Where does it come from? What does it entail? So in this um, slide, you can see on the left is a beautiful normal dog retina. Dogs' retinas are very different across the board. You can look at six dogs and they will all look different, and that's what makes them very confusing. This dog, I could tell you, has relatively short hair, has a dark hair coat, and is a large breed dog. So just from this picture, I can tell you that. And no one ever probably taught most people that in vet school, but um, the large tapetum usually means a large large breed dog, you've got a dark non-tapetum, and you've got a relatively dense or linear tapetal non-tapetal junction. So, and on the right is the histopathology of the retina, and um, you can see the, the layers, we'll go through them here in a second, and below you have what's called the choroid. So the components of the fundus, it's not just the retina, in fact from the outside in, you have the sclera, the choroid, the retina, the tapetum and non-tapetum, and finally the optic nerve, which I think of as the plug, or it's the brain track that makes it all work. So how do you look at it? So we're all taught a little differently. In fact, if you do it, you're only going to get to see 2% of the fundus. So you're up close and personal, which isn't always the best place to be with some animals who are um, not always that happy with a um, someone going up into their face. This is about all you get on the left, 2%. And if you're very diligent, you're probably still going to miss lesions. And so you've got these huge lesions here that you would see with indirect on the right. And then on the left, you've got this little minuscule area. So indirect, but indirect really will show you um, everything you want to see. It's getting used to it and doing it well that is the trick. Everything is upside down and backwards. Basically, um, you get a large field of view. Again, that's my preferred method. And a lot of people will ask me which lens to use. I tend to use a 30 diopter where I don't have to dilate the pupil. In the dark room, it'll dilate well enough and you can actually get a really good look. Um, as far as tips go, be very systematic. In fact, I like to start at the optic nerve and then I go quadrants like around, um, like on a clock. So I go straight up, which is technically down, and then I go around the clock. So I always see the same thing in the same order all the time. And I always start with the left eye first and then the right, because otherwise it gets confusing, um, or you might forget, oh, is it temporal or medial? So anyway, just be systematic. Another thing that I watch students do, get really close to the animal with indirect. As you can see here, you want to be arm's length. So if you get too close, you're not going to see a thing. You have to get pretty far away. It's progressive retinal atrophy. It's a, it's a lump term for the many inherited retinal degenerative diseases that affect numerous breeds of dogs. And it used to be that we had a lot of just pure breed dogs affected, but now that we've got all these designer mixed breeds, um, people are doing that with the thought of diluting bad problems, and they're actually enhancing them or not really getting rid of them. So this disease has a mutation in the rods. The majority of PRAs are rod diseases. There are a few cone ones, but for the most part, we're going to talk about the rod type. And so these dogs will lose their night vision first. And a lot of owners won't even notice because the dogs are with them all the time. They're carried if they're little. They're, um, they're with the owner, so they tend to be with lights on. Um, so they're not really allowed to be a dog, they don't go outside in the dark, and they don't do what, you know, hunt, for example, that, that's that been lost a long time ago. So it's been, it gets missed until the dog starts spooking, or it gets pretty bad. There, um, the ratio of rods to cones is 20 to 1. So 20 rods to 1 cone in the dog retina. So that's a lot. So if all the rods start dying, you're left with the cones that are sparse, except for in the area centralis where they're rich, and a few sparse ones everywhere else. And that excess amount of oxygen is very toxic to the cones. So dogs go blind from PRA at night, obviously, for the mutation, but in the day because the poor cones are subject to excessive oxygen and they die of oxidative stress.